I spent over four years trying to make a Pokemon fan game. Here are my results. This is Pokemon V. It's basically like a fan game that I've been working on for four years. And also, here's a pair of scissors. Probably easily uh, the best Pokemon I created in uh, this fan game. I've always asked myself, now, what if there were more generations in the GBA slash GS era? You know, like, the generations where the map designs were good and all the sprites had charm to them. I mean, look at these little guys. They bounce around and, like, they move, but, like, the newer ones, they just kind of sit there and they have, like, no personality to them. And when I say, like, a new generation in the DS slash GBA era, I mean, like, fully new type shit. You feel me? Like, it seems like a lot of fan games that got to come up with, they, like, have, like, the placeholder sound effects, the placeholder graphics, and from, like, Gen 3 and Gen 4, well, nah, I wanted mine to be, like, brand new, you know? Like, everything custom interface, something that hasn't been seen in a real game before. I wanted players to be immersed in, like, a new experience, as if they were opening up a new copy of Pokemon Platinum back in 2000 what it was like 2009 or something like that I don't know but it wasn't always this way I'm not gonna go too far into detail because then this video would be like hours long but Pokemon V originally started with me just drawing a region and Fakemon and little characters in a book back when I was young all those ideas are shit now they do not hold up today or they don't hold up to actual Game Freak standards but over time as my brain grew from microscopic to bite-sized, they started to make sense and they started to actually fully develop and evolve into something actually interesting over time. Around the age of like nine, I would like bring books to school or I would just steal paper from the teachers and I would sit there in class and I would just be drawing. I would just be drawing, I would be writing, coming up with ideas for stuff that I wanted. And honestly, like I still have all of those papers. And like, I can compare the old designs to the now revised good designs. It was around like four-ish years ago was the time that I actually started making the game. When I picked up RPG Maker XP, I spent like the first four months just screwing around, not really making anything until I was like, you know what? I actually want to make the game that I've been dreaming of. I want to design the Fakemon. And then I made an absolute monstrosity of a game using the Pokemon Essentials V16 engine. And oh god, oh god, it was awful. The reason that I don't have uh, this game anymore or anything from this game is because a long time ago, Mediafire decided to just wipe all accounts for no fucking reason. I don't know why. And. I lost a lot of progress from that, so uh, here's a personal fuck you to Mediafire. Thank you very much. But I restarted the project over and over and over again, and you know, as uh, each time that I restarted it, it would get better and better, you know. And eventually, these original ideas of mine started to shine, and the maps were looking beautiful, and the Fakemon started to look well. Okay, well, these fuckers get get them the fuck out of here. <laughs> I had mainly fully custom tile sets I would get from other creators or some of the tiles I would make myself. And also the story was starting to add up, movesets and stats started to become like balanced and each Pokemon wasn't, you know, either super underpowered or super overpowered. I was really excited for what was to come of this game man i mean like and that hasn't changed either i still wake up like almost every single day i'll be like making a bowl of cereal and pouring myself a cup of coffee and i'm just sitting there thinking of ideas and then i would write down in a little google document on my phone just to keep them in my brain and like my passion just will not die it's like a fire like, i've been working on this thing for years now now as of me uploading this video there's only playable content up to the third gym, so about like in six to seven-ish hours of gameplay. I really wanted to tie this game to the original Pokemon games basically as, as much as absolute possible. But I didn't want the game to have like all the features. A lot of fan games, they have like Mega Evolution, Dynamax, all the new learn sets that in newer generations and all this coverage. No, I wanted it to feel like it was from Generation 3 or Generation 4. I wanted the movesets to be balanced. I wanted stats to be balanced. I wanted, you know, the abilities to not be completely broken. In other words, I just wanted players to feel like they were playing 
emerald or platinum for the first time again. I, like many of you, remember what it felt like to open up that copy of an old Pokemon game for the first time and start playing and just feel so safe and so free. I miss that, man. But to make a game where players are fully immersed in the experience, there's a lot. There is a lot that goes into that. that a lot of these other developers don't really understand. If you look at all the other big fan games like Uranium, Insurgents, Infinite Fusion, Gaia, and you, you really notice a pattern. Everybody wants their games to have something crazy going on. I wanted my game to be simple. I wanted it to be relaxing. From generations one to five, you played through the games and you caught your favorite Pokemon and you went about your day at your own pace, but it feels like you get bombarded by cutscenes and features. No, those should be there to discover yourself. Nobody told you to come here. You just found a secret entrance and you came and you climbed to the top and the wind is blistering cold, shrieking in your ears and you find it's a memorial of some sort. You're back at a place that you haven't been to in a long time and you can surf now and you decide to surf across the water and you find this hidden island you've never seen before so you decide to walk in the sand and Wow, that's something you've never seen before. I guess it's just these kinds of things that, well, they take you home. Speaking of homes, there's a funny little white button down there that says subscribe. And the best part about this funny little white button? Well, if you click it, you get recommended these shitty videos more often. Who wouldn't want that? Oh shit, wait, that had literally nothing to do with homes. Fuck. Look at these stairs. You notice how like, the player slows down when going up and down these stairs and also, you know, it actually works as intended and it looks like the player is going up the stairs. <laughs> I'm looking at you, fucking Infinite Fusion. You fucking butchered the stairs. You fucking screwed the stairs up. I mean, who the fuck screws up stairs? No more funny effects or scripts. This is just me talking. It's seven minutes into the video now and I'm sure all of you guys are itching to hear about the actual details of this game and I'm not gonna spoil it because I want all of you to experience that yourself or when the game comes out but I will let go of some details every Pokemon game has a villain story and it also has the eight milestones that the player has to go through which in this case is gym badges and for the villain story it's gonna consist of a lot of interdimensional stuff for example this game takes place in the dimension where mega or the universe where mega evolution does not exist but also alola does not exist the ultra beast won and the tapu's law so thus everybody in alola nobody lives there anymore it's just uninhabitable and there's lore throughout the region surrounding this, even though it has nothing to do with the Loa, the actual region itself. This is a worldwide event. This is going on in every region. Everybody knows about this. I really can't wait for people to see the villains that I came up with and the arcs behind those villains and why they do what they do and things like that. I think I really, over years, brainstormed a very, very good story. And it hits so hard, especially with the music. Oh, it hits so hard, and I cannot wait for the world to experience that. The thing that I'll drop when it comes to the eight gym badges and that part of the story is it's going to be pretty simple, just like, you know, what you're used to, but it's going to have an extra step added to it. There's going to be a post game that's more required uh, than most post games, but it's actually going to be more like a second game that's going to consist of a world championship but nothing like what's in black and white too it's going to be a lot better a lot more open there's going to be a lot more things to do and it's it's going to be great like you, you it's i'm so excited you don't even get it. i'm so excited to develop this on the screen right here i'm going to display some of the fake Mon that's going to be in the game just to kind of hype you guys up see which ones you like you know and then not really good at outros just like chris and also yeah shout out to him right here he actually was the one that really motivated me to make this video and to start making content. I connected with him and he's been helping me out a lot when it comes to, you know, videos and stuff. And I also run a draft league in his Discord server. You can join that in the description below if you want. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really good at outros, so 